you very much for being here today. We're going to talk about um, COIL. So um, COIL is collaborative online international learning is the idea of it. So I want to take a little bit of time to introduce you to the topic. And then we have two um, experienced COILers on the call um, who are going to share a little bit about how they do it in their classroom. And then we're gonna, we'll talk a little bit about how you can get involved if you're interested um, and, and go from there. So that's kind of the, the plan for uh, this presentation. So thank you for being here. Um, so as far as COIL, just to give you a little bit of an overview of what it is, um, COIL is the idea that you have a project where you are collaborating with somebody from another country. Um, so uh, we, uh, the focus is to have your students working with students from another country where they come together for part of the semester, usually four to six weeks, to do some type of collaborative project. And it's really important we said up front, the idea is not that you find somebody whose class exactly overlaps with yours, in case, in that, and those are really hard to do. What we have found is when you can come together with somebody else to do a collaborative project that's only a short portion of the class, it makes a lot more um, viable option to be able to actually work with. So um, when we are when we think about coiling, what we're thinking about is what's one project that you do in your class that you could work with, have your students work with students from somewhere else to get a very intercultural experience as a part of that. Um, so once you start to think about that, then then we can help jump in to help out with that whole process of what that looks like. But that's where we, I always like to start is saying this is a short four to six week portion of the course. It, sometimes they go longer, but usually about four to six weeks. And you'll hear from Maria Cristina and uh, from Anu in a little bit. They'll actually describe their projects that they have done. Um, but that's that's a good starting point. We also recommend that you start off small. Um, it's really it's really neat to be like, oh, I've got this great partner. We want to do this, this, this and this. And then you realize wow, we only have this much of the semester that overlaps, or we have these breaks that go on at the same time. So it's, it's usually better to start small and expand out and try and shoot for the moon and um, have issues that come up along the way that, that just pop up always. Um, so as far as how COIL works, usually we try to get you to, to an orientation. This, this is a COIL orientation. Um, and then once you get an idea of what it is, then we help you find a partner for your project. And we'll talk about what that partnering can look like. There's a couple different ways that happens, um, but you can find a, a COIL partner. And once you do that, then we try we help you work through the process of planning that project. And it's more than just the project because there are some things you think about like time zone differences, um, class schedules, um, university schedules, um, other things. There's the technology issues that might pop up. So we, we've done enough of these now that we can help out with that kind of planning process to help you get to the point where you're like, OK, I'm ready to do that. That usually happens the semester before um, it, it, it starts. Um, if somebody was today was like, I really want to do this for the fall, we could work on it over the summer and still have enough time. But it's, we want to we want to have enough time to think about it so that it's not a we're going to jump into it tomorrow because there are enough obstacles that we want to make sure we um, get out of the way as possible. So it's, it runs as smoothly as possible. And then it comes to the, the, the semester you actually do this and we continue to support you through that process. Um, we can help with the technology um, and figuring out if there's any technology glitches. We can kind of help support you through that so that it is as smooth a um, experience both for your students and for the students from the other country. So that's kind of the timeline of it, just to kind of give you that idea of it. Um, then the, the third thing I want to talk about was how you actually can partner with somebody. Um, there, there are three ways that we've kind of done it on our campus. One is if you have a partner somewhere in the world where you're like, hey, I've worked with this person a lot. They're at a, this university. I can get in touch with them and say, hey, would you be willing to do this? And um, actually, both our presenters today have done that. That's exactly how they got started in this. Um, they're, they're, in addition, we're part of the SUNY COIL network. Um, and part of that SUNY COIL network, they do what are called partnering fairs three or four times a year. Um, you write up, it's, 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 it's almost like a dating site. Like you write up your profile. Hey, I'm a um, fashion designer I want to be able to pro to do a collaboration with X and then you go up and you kind of present and there's some really great conversations that happen around that of like ooh this might work well with what you're trying to do um, so we do these partnering fairs three to four times a year so if you if you're looking for somebody that to, to have um, start a partnership with we can help support that if we need to um, and so I can get that information out to you on how what that what that profile looks like um, and how you can present that the best way and then helping you find that partner to be able to work with the third option that we have, um, and we didn't have this this past year because grants were 
few and far between, but traditionally we have some grant opportunities as well um, where we've actually had money to send some people to travel to the country and actually plan with their faculty partner um, as a part of that. And um, again, those happen a lot through the COIL Center. And um, and so I, as I know about those, that's part of the, the benefit of having uh, meetings like this where I can be like, oh, if I know you are interested in this, then anytime I hear about a grant, I can also let you know for that as well. Um, the, the first two options, we don't really have a lot of money involved in it, so it's really just a meeting online and talking with the person. If there's a grant, then then we do actually have the we usually have funds to actually either send you to that country to work with them, or they can we, there's money to send them here, so you can actually plan with your partner in person. Um, again, those aren't we don't have money just laying around for that. Those are grants that come up every once in a while, but that's that's the third option that we have for that. Um, then, as far as an actual project. Um, usually, and this is what this is kind of the the process that we want you to think about when you're doing the project is it's good to have a couple of weeks of icebreakers, um, group formation, and also just kind of breaking some of the intercultural barriers that happen. Um, just practicing communicating with somebody who might not be a native English speaker, um, and how can that work? And how do you how do you uh, make sure that you can communicate well when you get to the project? So we really encourage having one to two weeks of just an icebreaker. Um, that happens again. This is, doesn't have to be at the beginning of the semester. This might be starting week five in your class or week seven in your class. But during that time, while you continue to have your class going on, this is something that's going on in addition to it, where they're starting to get to know the partners they're going to be working with. Um, once you do that, then you start to dive into what that project is going to be and have them start to figure out how they're going to get do interact with each other and get data from each other if that's what they need to do. Start to figure out that process and learn some of the technology tools they're going to be using to interact. Um, then we get into the actual problem that they're going to be working on, the project they're going to be working on, and get very much into that. And then we'd like to have some type of conclusion to it where they usually present to each other and also try to embed some reflection into that. How did this go from the project level, but how did it also go from an intercultural level? What were the things that were really good when you tried to work with somebody interculturally, but what are some of the things you might have learned or might have been stumbling blocks that you need to work through? So that's that's kind of the, the how we like to build these. Again, I, I said five to twelve weeks here, but usually they're 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 four to eight, six weeks, four to seven weeks like that inside of the semester. Um, and now now that you kind of have an overview of what COIL is, I would like you to actually hear from a couple of faculty that have talked through this. Um, so first, we're going to have Dr. Anu Shastri um, talk about the COIL project that she's had ongoing for. Um, couple of years now um, in India and then after that we'll have uh, Maria Dr. Marina Christina Montoya talk about her um, she's she's our coil resident at this point she I think she's she's got the longest run at this point so she'll uh, talk about some of her different coil experiences as well so Anu thank you for being with us and I'm going to switch over to your presentation so give me just a second and uh, sorry um your presentation is here and there we go so Anna, thank you very much thank you uh, thank you chilton uh, hello everyone uh, uh, chilton i do have a question if i click i will be able to go to the next slide as and when i want no just let me know when you want to click just say please go to the next slide and i'll do it for you Oh, I see. OK, if you click now, you will see a little R bat. I just want that to be. <laughs> I just wanted that. Thank you. Thank you, Chilton. So hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, this is a partnership that I have been working with at Jindal Global University, uh, which is also called a JGU in um, the north of India, very close to New Delhi. And uh, of course, now you know it is really going through a, a worst uh, wave of the pandemic and all our thoughts and prayers are with the people in India. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that is the, uh, the latest that we have. Um, but this is something that I've been doing over the last couple of years. And although I have made attempts to do it over four semesters, two semesters have worked very well 
one semester because we made this rapid switch to our um, online learning. You know, everything uh, didn't fall in place and I had to discontinue it. And uh, the other one was just this past semester where my partner's class had a, a low enrollment, so it needed to be cancelled. Uh, so I couldn't do it. So this is something that I have done in the fall of 2019 and fall of 2020 that I will be sharing my results with you. Uh, could we go to the next slide, please? Um, my presentation has three, three basic um, objectives. The first one is uh, the backgrounds and highlights of uh, this collaborative project. The second is amongst the courses that I teach in educational psychology, the one that I selected was um, Educational Psychology 120. It is a 100 level course, so I felt it gave me the freedom to make changes as I moved along. Uh, it was not one of these very high stakes kind of a course in um, like a 200 level course. Um, you know, which uh, has more of juniors. This fortunately has a very good mix. It has some first years, second years, third years, and even some graduating seniors. So it lent itself very well to the, the COIL collaborative project. And then lastly, I will share some student feedback. If I could move on to the next slide, please. Um, in terms of the background, the overall project goal was to address the overlapping institutional missions of creating global citizens. But I wanted to operationalize this. And for me, it meant developing an interdisciplinary project to be implemented in fall of 2019. And pedagogically speaking, I wanted to use a social constructivist framework, you know, something that would be very meaningful something that would be experiential, something that will provide them with some kind of an insight. Um, so I wanted to work within that framework. I wanted it to be mutually beneficial. This is our COIL philosophy, that it should be mutually beneficial to students of both the institutions and something that is sustainable. I was hoping that I, was, uh, I would be able to continue with it at least Ideally speaking, twice a year, if not at least once a year. And somehow that is how it has kind of uh, fallen, you know, as I said, um, fall of 2019 and fall of 2020. Those worked very well. So um, we developed a task based experiential learning project designed to facilitate the development of intercultural understanding and digital literacy skills. So different tools that students would use. At this point, I would definitely like to thank Maria uh, Montoya for her guidance. You know, we spent, Maria was very generous with her time, you know, and whenever I would ask her, you know, I have a, a list of questions, Maria, could we meet and talk about it? And all those conversations served as a very good sounding board. You know, we could, I could tell her, these are some of the ideas that, and I was purely, purely a novice at that stage. I attended something like this, and um, that was held by the faculty center. I spoke a lot with Maria. She shared different templates, different ideas, and all that was sort of helpful for uh, for me in terms of designing uh, the actual project that I did. Uh, I applied for an international travel grant. Chilton was very helpful in this. And um, in, in fall of 2018, uh, and I was given those monies which helped me to go to this university, speak with some of the faculty and, um, uh, you know, move this process forward. Uh, I also participated, me and my partner in India, both of us, we participated in the COIL Academy in the summer of 2019. And um, once again, Chilton was helpful with that. And he, um, and when both of us were in the Academy, it helped us to sort of design our uh, projects and uh, develop uh, um, a kind of a better perspective, a refined perspective 
as to how we could uh, move along. And in fact, at the end of the COIL Academy, we had our project in good shape. You know, we just needed to tweak it. So in the fall, we, we felt we were absolutely ready. Uh, Chilton, could we go to the next slide, please? Now, this is the project, um, uh, Understanding Life at College, um, and it was used in fall of 2019. I used the same uh, project in fall of 2020, but I adapted it to the pandemic conditions that we were going through. The, the primary outcome was demonstrate similarities and differences between life at SUNY Oneonta, New York, and JGU, India. Your ability will be reflected in interviewing your classmates. So the interview was uh, something uh, that they had to use to gather the data, as Chilton was mentioning, on life at college and creating a joint PowerPoint presentation. So this was the product. And the requirements were, and if I could just uh, say a little something here, in terms of the icebreakers, what we used were some self-introductory videos, and that helped them to get an idea of, um, you know, the classmates in India. And when I explained, sometime towards the end of the semester, our class is going to expand to include our classmates in India, and they were kind of excited about it. So there were um, the, the interview, and again, we gave them as much as possible some directions within a certain guideline in terms of what they need to talk about uh, during the interview. And during some class time, I you know, during classes, you know, I set aside time where I paired them in little, little groups here uh, in at SUNY um, in terms of helping them develop a list of questions. And that was also kind of like a preparatory activity. So the first section was personal life. Imagine you were planning to do your semester abroad at JGU and any aspect of this academic or social life that you consider as important should be explored in the interview. So a range of things like where do you live on or off campus, the meals, the dining facilities, whether you cook your own meals or you use the, uh, you know, the dining halls on campus managing chores like laundry free time and what kind of activities do you engage in academic life this was kind of more important uh, in terms of connecting that to uh, my epsy 120 course um, with respect to the class schedule class sizes your majors and the reasons for choosing your university and your interactions with your faculty members so i kind of we gave them these two broad categories in terms of the personal life and academic life at college. Could we move on to the next slide, please? Thank you. Now, these were the pro 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 products that we were looking for. Two products, and the first one uh, would be a team product, a joint PowerPoint presentation will be created, and the second one was a reflection piece that Chilton mentioned in his introduction. And in the reflection piece, I we broke it down even further. What did I learn you know, interculturally about the lives of my peers at other campus, assumptions or stereotypes I had about the other culture and differences and similarities between the two cultures and academically about my course, you know, the insights that I gained. What parts of this COIL enhanced course worked well for you? and what were some of the challenges and would I be interested? So I was also trying to get some feedback in terms of tweaking it as we moved forward. Could we go to the next one, please? This is what we used during the fall of 2020. Um, and the core of the project remained the same, but I we adapted it to the pandemic in terms of how the students in India were adapting to online classes, staying at home, staying safe. And it so happened that during the fall of 2020, there was a major festival in India, Diwali, the Festival of Lights. 
And so some of these conversations also started, you know, also were explored during their interviews. The colors that are used during the festivals, like one of the students was saying, you know, I was surprised to learn that white is not used, anything in white, white color, white outfits are not used during festival times. They are used during uh, death ceremonies. Uh, so the interpretations, red, yellow, very earthy colors. So this kind of an insight that they gained. Um, and I really want to thank Chilton for his assistance with technology. I mean, this is the technology part of it is, is my weakness. I'm not very fluent with that. And Chilton's help uh, was extremely beneficial for um, moving this project along, uh, you know, along in terms of the Zoom meetings with both the classes, navigating uh, with the project's uh, site on Google, uploading the self-introduction video clips and on YouTube and the like. And as we moved along, you know, there were some, uh, uh, there was a lot of troubleshooting that had to be done and Chilton graciously helped me with that. Could we go to the next slide, please? So here is some student feedback. I have two slides uh, on student feedback. The first, students seemed much more like me than I thought they were going to. And also seeing Sodexo in their dining hall was cool. This was something that sort of struck very much for them, you know, and they saw the, the staff there wearing the same uniforms that they wear over here. And to the students, this was kind of like very interesting. You know, for us, we know all this, the corporate world. So there is Pizza Hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Domino's in India. Of course, they have adapted it. So we have pizza flavor, flavors with a lot of curry flavors in it and things like that. But for the students to see Sodexo in the same two campuses was insightful, if I could say that. Many aspects of the campus looked identical to ours, such as the dining hall and the places to sit and relax around campus. The weather also looked beautiful. I was unaware they had palm trees. I also thought it was funny that they had the same social media friends as us, the mannequin challenge, which as, as an instructor, I'm totally clueless about it. But for them, it was something that they could connect with. I'm excited for their Zoom meeting. So, you know, that it brought about, and that was very helpful for me, that there was some excitement in terms of looking forward to interacting with them more. And I was amazed. They figured out different ways. Either it was WhatsApp, it was Snapchat, it was Facebook, whatever worked for them and their classmates in India. And that, for me, was very, very insightful. Could we go to the next one, please? So uh, I learned more than what I was expecting to, given that we were meeting for the first time. We learned a lot about ourselves during the pandemic. Our situations are very similar, despite our time differences. This is what I wanted to see. And I was hoping, you know, and as I move along with it, I want to really explore this further in terms of the insights, the transformation that has that has occurred. And since I'm going to be a teacher, I would uh, it would be nice if I could provide such coil experiences to my students. This actually touched me. Uh, you know, it really touched my heart. I said, "Wow, this is really in terms of taking it forward, taking it to the next step." Um, and that, you know, a beginning teacher feels that this is something that I can uh, do as I move along. Uh, next one, please. So I would be happy to answer any questions or if we want to do it after Maria's presentation, we can do it. Anything that would be comfortable. But thank you all for giving me this opportunity to share uh, my uh, work with the students. Thank you.
Yes, thank yes, you very much. Very much and we are going to, we'll wait we'll till the wait end to ask questions just so you can have, kind of hear both, both from Christina and, and then we will, I'm gladly take questions if you have some at that point. So thank you very much. I was trying to find my applause button while I was talking and I couldn't do that very well. So there you go. Um, so thank you, Anu. All right, um, and Maria Christina is also going to be sharing today. So thank you very much. Um, I am going to play from here. So, Maria Christina, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Um, I'm a coil matchmaker. That's how I introduce myself. And I really like to convince everyone, as I did with Anu, that, uh, that this is a, a great methodology, a great strategy to enhance your classroom and educate global citizens. So I have been in doing COIL since 2014 when I discovered at a COIL conference. They do it every year, every two years. Chilton can clarify that now. And um, I met Chilton there. I never saw him before on campus. I met him in Manhattan. Uh, and then we started talking. Why, how do we do this on campus? So I, I called a friend, a colleague friend that I had in Universidad de Cartagena in Colombia. And I started with, with her. She was my first um, COIL experience and the first time that I received that training with the COIL SUNY Center. Um, so at that point, as as uh, Chilton was explaining at the beginning, I uh, planned for the moon and I couldn't. Uh, so that first time was fun, but I was too ambitious. I understand that. And sorry, my computer is dying. <laughs> OK, so um, so the second time that I did it with the same partner, with my my academic friend in Colombia, uh, it came better. I started at an intermediate course because I thought that with an intermediate course, the students that were more fluent, it was going to work better. Um, later on, uh, I discovered that I could do it at any level. It doesn't have to be with introductory courses, intermediate, advanced. It depends on the module. It depends how you plan it and design it. It could work at any level. Um, so with her, I couldn't continue, but it was because more of the bureaucracy of this particular university and she was put into other roles and she couldn't continue with me, but I connected. I, I what I did with her, I went to a conference. I connected to my um, alma mater in Colombia and then I started with them. With them, with Universidad del Valle, I had been working since 2016 and I continue my academic relationship with them and we have accomplished a lot. They started with a pilot program where their students in Univalle did COIL the same students for three consecutive semesters while I changed mine. I changed mine with the same course, but mine changed. Theirs didn't change. They continue English two, three, and four. They're doing English, I'm doing Spanish. Uh, they could do that because their requirement for English as a foreign language is more than what we require of a foreign language for, for our students. So, so they were able to do it and that made that COIL partnership be so strong that when I plan as a faculty led um, during that time to Colombia, then their students that never had been out planned a trip also, an exploratory trip to the US and also they they proposed a presentation for the COIL conference and they were able to come for that COIL conference and the students were able to present their experience. So all these reflections that Anu shared uh, from her students, they were able to come to New York and express what COIL meant for them, for the Colombian students. And I also took some of the, the students that I had here, but mine were not constant. Mine changed every semester. So that's that was our first pilot. Um, after that, uh, because it was so strong, I was able to secure support from that university and I was able to go on a Fulbright grant in spring uh, 2019 to dis disseminate COIL. And I was going to do COIL while I was there with somebody here, but Colombia had and is going through a very difficult um, time right now, political, socioeconomic. 
So the students were on a strike and uh, I couldn't do that coil. So I was assigned to teach technologies in foreign language classroom um, for a graduate course. And this graduate course was for teachers, already teachers. So I taught about COIL and I was able to make them design modules since some of them were designing COIL modules beginning in kindergarten with another kindergarten teacher here all over to 12th grade. So I was able to see that COIL could work in the K through 12 level as well. You just have to agree with your partner on what is that you're able to do, what technology you count on, what is the context of the two classrooms and, and what the possibilities. So that way I was able to incorporate public, private universities, undergraduate, graduate and K through 12. For me, the most important um, idea that you need to have to make COIL work is to have a purpose. So according to your discipline, according to what you teach, not every course you can COIL. It may be one course that it, it works better than others. And what is your purpose? What do you want your students to learn within that discipline and, and whatever topic you teach? For me, it was basically overall cross cultures. I wanted to do something similar to what Anu did at the beginning with my language courses, uh, making them compare their lifestyles, their college life, um, and, and I started that way. Um, and languages because I was doing Spanish, they were doing English and they were um, there. They had to speak in English and my students had to speak in Spanish and that way they increased their communication skills in a foreign language. However, as I continue working with it, I said I need to go beyond this. I, I think I can do modules that are specific to certain topics that are mm, that could generate more discussion even at that beginning level. So so I said I, I I don't want to keep doing my modules on comparing college life and, and keep doing this because I think it's students can do more right at that moment. And I was going also through a reassessment of my design through the strike through the Fulbright grant that I was there doing another training with my COIL partner. So I had time to think and to redesign this. And I had been doing COIL for four years at that point. So um, and then uh, we got the open educational resources or Spanish book uh, one and two, which presented a lot of materials that I could use to design new modules. So I decided to do more. I decided to do modules on environmental um, and climate and life on land. And I said, well, this is perfect to address the sustainability, um, the sustainable development goals. I think I can do more with this. So so while my students were learning about uh, grammar and vocabulary on the environment. Then I proposed with my partner a module where students had to uh, analyze an environmental problem in Colombia and an environmental problem in the United States at their level, just by looking at national parks here, looking at regions over there. Um, and then we realized, well, maybe our students proficiency level is not ready for that uh, when they design the final outcomes and some of them were better than others. So let's say, how about we do, since we also have the vocabulary on tourism, how about if we combine ecotourism and we do uh, something where the students have to design a travel plan for the other? where they said we're going to bring you to a national park here in the United States. You're going to bring us to a national park in Colombia and this is what is going to cost and this is how we're going to get there and this is what we're going to see. So when they did all that, they were practicing vocabulary, they were practicing grammar and they were becoming aware of environmental uh, context situations in, in the two different countries. So there is where I am right now with this. Um, I think my modules can go in any direction I want them to be. Um, in the icebreakers, I incorporated well, this semester. I had uh, some students on the other side on Colombia in Colombia that they were 
uh, from commerce, uh, a degree in marketing and commerce, something like that. So I, we, my partner and I designed an icebreaker where they have to go to supermarkets and take pictures and show each other how the supermarkets, what, how they look in different places, what they sell and the prices for what they sell and what people consume. So this was an innovative kind of icebreaker. So it was not only let's talk, but let's go and share pictures about something specifically. Um, and this semester I started another collaboration with another university at a very advanced level in my dialectology class where they talk about dialects. This was all in Spanish because the class over there was in Spanish and mine was in Spanish, but advanced. And that worked very well for being just the first time. Uh, I was able to guide it because I was experienced. My faculty partner, my new faculty partner was not experienced, but she was able to guide her students. And I think one real benefit that I have been able to count on is counting on um, TAs, teaching assistants, students, involving the students to help us with the technology part, with the icebreakers. So I empower our own students to say, okay, COIL is your project. Help me do the icebreakers. What do you think we can ask the students over there and the students over here? And then at the end, they are in charge of the Zoom meeting and they, uh, they set it up. They brought the two groups together. They did break up gr groups and they made us think of uh, what is COIL for you, this reflection. Do like a paper with some words and then show it. So and, and this, my TA and her TA in Colombia were doing all this work. Um, the two faculty were just audience like everyone else. So I, I think that's a great thing to count on, on a student to, to be TA for COIL only. Um, so how do I keep my relationship? I, I always think that COIL is like a good marriage. <laughs> it's a marriage that get along, um, but allows for third and fourths and, and other people to get into the marriage too, because it's not that you marriage to one person. You can, if you like COIL and you feel that, that you flow with COIL, you can do COIL with different people in different courses. Uh, but doing it one with one partner is great. Evolving with that partner, changing, being flexible as you design new modules and transform your modules. I don't think I do the same thing that I did in 2016 with the same partner. We have evolved to use now modules that are more specific to certain topics and certain content with our, within our courses. And we had been collecting data on surveys that currently we are analyzing and writing an article about it. Um, so the, the relationship really shows you learn from the other person, you learn from the other uh, system. I thought that, well, I'm doing it with Colombia. I'm Colombian, I understand, and I think Anu can, can um, understand this. It, well, India, I'm from India, I understand it. No, you learn so much from your own culture because they work differently and you have been so much, uh, so much time here in the United States that you think differently now. Um, so you reveal talents that you may not know that you have uh, in this collaboration. Um, and it's, it's fun. It's definitely something fun to do in your courses. The students enjoy it. Uh, there's some things that you need to agree to not hurt the student grade because not all the students are willing and uh, and saying, oh, I want to do it. And I want to meet someone from somebody from the other country. Some students say I, I had a student that said I don't need more relationships and I don't need to learn anything about the other country. And I had to work with this student to observe rather than participate. Uh, but made him aware that that he needed to do the assignment by by observing what others were doing. So so being flexible, discovering that you can work and collaborate with someone across cultures and model that for your own students and empower students here in Oneonta and over there, empower students to be um, the the ones who drive the coil design for you as TAs or COIL coordinators. So there is where I am right now. I love COIL and I and and I can COIL all my classes in one semester. I don't think that's at this point is is taking me more energy or time that that what I have to and, and it really has transformed my courses.
and that's all. Thank you, Maria Christina. Um, uh, yeah, as you can see, like Maria Christina is our resident expert on coil. Um, she has she has been doing it the longest and at the the, the most uh, consecutive, I think, at, at the same time. So it's 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 impressive to see how it's grown in your own, how you've been able to do the Fulbright uh, with it as well, and um, really bring a lot of other people along on our campus. So thank you very much. Um, I did want to address just one or two things, and I'd love to hear what questions you have about it. Um, you know, what I love about COIL is it can be very specific or very broad. We've had a lot of them that have been very interdisciplinary. Um, so it's not that you need to, to necessarily um, have somebody that's doing the exact same thing. In Maria Christina's case, she's doing foreign languages, so she often works with another foreign language um, professor. But as she said, she's worked with some marketing and business people as well. Um, and and so it, it doesn't have to be somebody who does the same thing as you. And sometimes some of the best ones work when it's not somebody doing the same discipline when you, as you were. It can be interdisciplinary. Um, and so uh, the other person I was hoping to have on today was uh, somebody from our music department, Andres Balans, who's been doing one where he has his students create um, soundtracks for um, recordings, uh, scripts uh, that are written in another country. So the, the students in the other place are writing scripts about a story and then they work with his students to actually create a soundtrack to go along with it. Um, and so there's there's lots of neat examples like that across our campus where uh, these COIL projects don't have to be in the same discipline as you and, and can really work well um, other ways. So just want to kind of say that out as loud out loud as well. Um, and finally, the last thing I'll say and then we'd love to hear from you is just um, as you heard from both Anu and from Maria Christina is we are here to help support you through that process. So if you are like, if you're at the point where you're like, I, this sounds interesting, but I don't even know where to start, then we are happy to sit down with you and say, okay, wh what one class would you like to start this in? Um, and again, I would recommend starting with one class, one that you think works well for, that, that could have a situation where it could have a project in it. Um, and and then we can expand out from there. Then we can think about what, what would be that project? What could that look like? Um, and then we can start to find a, pro a, a partner for you. We can talk through if you have somebody you, you have in mind, um, if you want to go through the COIL partnering process to be able to do this um, and how we can how we can expand from there. Um, and and the flexibility parts is the, the final important thing that I'd say with that, because a lot of times you'll, you'll envision this, but then somebody will come to you and say, oh, I would love to work with you. Here's what I have. And then we start to morph this final project out of what both of you need from your class. Um, so I, I think you've heard that both from Anu and, and Maria Christina that, that a lot of what happened came out of flexibility and continuing to want to work through this. Um, so with that, I'm going to be quiet and see what thoughts you have or questions you have, um, either for me or for Anu or for Maria Christina, um, just about either the process or anything that you want to talk more about. Question yes, here. Maria, thank you very much. Um, so, um, Missy Gems and I want to know, like, how did you figure out a project? What, what, did you start with an idea? Did you work with the other person? Like, you said it's a marriage, so there's got to be some discussion about how it fits into both. So, can you tell me more about that? Um, I can start. Um, you start with your syllabus. So, you have your idea of what courses are you going to teach in which course of all that you teach, you think you would like to coil because you want your students to learn something in the content area that you're teaching about the other culture. Um, so it could be that, or it could be like a new started. She, she wanted a general course that she could explore and, and adapt in, in a general sense um, how the, the, there's differences. So you start with your syllabus. You share your syllabus as the first thing that you do. You said that this is the course that I think it would work for for whatever reason or idea you have, and that may be transformed along the way. And then the other person also shows you the syllabus, and then you start comparing and said, oh, there is a match here. There is a content that you teach, a content that I teach, that I think we can design something where students can look at your culture, my culture, and see how we do things differently or similar or, or collaborate. So, so the best, the first thing is the, is sharing your syllabus and selecting the course that you want. Cool, thank you. I really appreciate that you 
you start this, you are both emphasizing that it's, you start with something small. You start with like, what, five week project, six weeks or something. And that's not necessarily at the beginning. So you know your class and not at the end because you got to do final stuff, but somewhere in the middle and you, you make it sort of, you start small. That, that makes it much more accessible to me. And if I could say something, um, you know, the, the schedule of the semester for both the institutions was an important factor that I had to take into account because uh, their semester in India, uh, it ended earlier than ours, which meant that we had to time our project much before that. And as I said, in the fall, there is the, the festival holidays, and that seems like a little bit of, um, you know, an interruption during our semester. And we have our Thanksgiving, which is similar to that um, in terms of the interruption. So when can they connect? When, what are the good times? And for me, it was these different time zones which was a challenge. So I kind of told them either early in the morning or uh, in the evening would be good times for them uh, to interact with. And we are about almost 11 and a half hours uh, behind. So you could select that. Language was not an issue for me, but time zones was certainly an issue for me because of which they had to do it if possible asynchronously and if it had to be done synchronously then it was either the morning hours or the evening hours that could be tapped into and and there are obstacles that come along but mostly are logistically like um the students telling me oh my partner doesn't answer me and and i keep calling and you realize that it's also, it also depends that you need to explain to the students what are their lives. That's why the icebreakers show them what do they do. They study, they work, well, and then you see the culture personality. Who responds right away, wants to get this done right away, more practical. And, and while the others wait until the last minute, answer you later, have a different approach to the project, and you have to be the mediator there. And, and when students do not respond to each other, the assistant, the COIL coordinator is the chaser. I tell them, let me know who's not responding. Let me know immediately who do we need to rearrange. So all that part that, that bothers me because I'm, I'm trying to get this going and then the students are saying, nobody responds to me. I don't, so then I, I ask the TA, take care of that and then everything continues working smoothly and I need to rearrange groups and things like that. But that's basically logistically. And if I could add to that, I, I ran into these problems a lot, the ones that Maria mentioned. And what helped us was that having their JGU uh, email addresses, SUNY Onianta email addresses, as well as the Google addresses. Many a times they would not check their Google mail at all but they were very prompt in checking their school email and that helped in uh, getting that kind of an alert you know oh there is something on gmail let me go there and check that in colombia they use whatsapp so we also share phone numbers and create whatsapp groups uh in order to to get the communication uh flowing and Reed, to go back to your question, the one thing I was going to add was it, 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 when you start with your syllabus and you start with your objectives for your class, I think that's a great place to start. You, you might have a project in mind, but it's really about what do I want my students to get out of this class? And some of these COIL projects, the objectives can be very different. So it might be that you come to it from an art project on your hand, on your side, but you're getting um, data from a, a different department completely where they're focused more on how can that be interpreted in a, in a specific way so the objectives for the two classes can be very different and the outcomes of that can be very different in the coil project and sometimes that's really cool to see how your art affected somebody's um, science experiment that they were doing and how their ex experiment affected your artwork and so you can still focus on the objectives of your courses each individually but still come together to do a really cool project 
And if I could add one point to that is whether the project is going to be graded or not played a very important difference. Like, for instance, in the fall, for both me and my partner, the project was graded. So the students were definitely far more motivated to participate. But the next time uh, in the fall of 2020, when I tried it, uh, somehow my partner said, you know, this time I'm not going to have it as graded. I'm just going to give them some class participation points. And I, I went along, whatever the very fact that he was willing to do it was uh, good for me. And I went along. But, you know, the students found out, they said, for them, it is not a graded project, so they are not all that keen to participate. So there was some, and I was surprised to hear that from the students. So if at all it is possible, even if there are a few points allocated to it, if both of them can make it as a graded project, it incentivizes the students to participate a little more meaningfully. But in any case, as Maria mentioned, you know, the most important thing is for us to be flexible and look at the uh, project goal. What is it that we need to accomplish and what are the different ways of accomplishing it? And one thing is that your course doesn't have to be modify or adapt to change. No, your course is your course. You teach it. You follow your curriculum. You don't need to change it. You just incorporate a module within one of the elements of your semester of your course. So your course is not being changed because of COIL. And that is the reason why it is called COIL Enhanced Project. You know, so you have just one assignment, which is a, a kind of an add on or it enhances the course. Yeah, I like the word enhance because uh, that's my focus is I, I, I want these to be something that enhances a project you're already doing. I don't want it to be yet another thing you're adding into a class. So that's why I, I like that word enhance because it's, that's really the concept I like of this is I don't want you to add yet something else into the course. I would like to be able to enhance something you're already in doing just to make it uh, give it a different uh, an intercultural experience as a part of it. So I want to see if there's other questions that are out there. If, um, if, if you have any other questions about this. At this point, for you must have been very thorough. So, um, so, so, some next steps then um, is I, I, I'm happy to follow up with you if you're interested to to get more information on this, or if if you're thinking about doing this. Um, we try, we have, as Marie Christine pointed out, like we, I try to create, a, not I, we try to create a close community around this so that you have some support mechanisms. Um, I'm happy to support you from the technology side and I've talked with a lot of people that have gone through these, so know the pedagogical side of it, but also it's good to hear from a teacher that has been doing this and what they're experiencing issues in the classroom. We can connect you with a Maria Christina or an Anu or some of the other people that have done COIL as well to be able to talk about it from that perspective as well. So we like to have an ongoing conversation about this. Um, so I'll be reaching out just to say, hey, if, if you are interested in this some more, um, how would you like to get started? Do you have somebody in mind that you'd like to work with? Do you have a class in mind that you'd like to work with this? How can we help you do that next step? Um, as we said before, you know, one, the first thing to do is kind of think about what class would make the most sense. And then do you have a partner? And if not, how can we help with that partner? And then we go through a lot. There, there, there are a lot of things to think about, but we've done this enough where we can say, here's the things you need to think about right now. I'm going to kind of help guide you through that process. So with that, we'll say thank you very much. Thank you very much to Anu and to Maria Christina for, uh, for, for presenting today. I appreciate you sharing your experiences with this. Um, and uh, thank you all for being here today. And uh, you. have a good rest of the day. That was great. Thank you. Bye-bye now.